bad diets, um, fasting diets can be a trigger to sort of exacerbate an underlying eating disorder. So I just encourage everyone that might suggest this to really pay attention to that. Exactly right. Well, the yeah, I'm not gonna let, it, let him get away with that. Hi, I'm Chris James and you're watching The Healthy Alternative. Today we are doing a reaction. We're having a lot of fun with these reactions uh, and I love reacting to the doctor's content because it is in my wheelhouse, right? So today we're gonna be looking at OMAD diet. Does fasting for weight loss put too much stress on the body? Well, I already have my opinion about uh, one meal a day, fasting and things of that nature. Let's see what the doctors are talking about today. We now want to bring in integrative medicine dietitian Robin Forutan. So explain, Robin, why you think the OMAD diet can stress out the body. Just because we have data to show that 14 to 16 hours of fasting overnight is beneficial does not mean that a wider fasting time of 23, you know, 22 to 23 hours fasting is even better. Only Okay. All right. So they have a panel. Looks like we're in the middle of a show already. They've got a panel. They've got Dr. Jason Fung. So I know this is going to be a balanced panel. Now, what she's saying to just get us kicked off is correct. Just because you have a fact over here that says X, Y, Z doesn't mean if you stack that fact or multiply that fact, you're going to get a multiple, you know, benefit or something of that nature. So I, that, I understand that may be really beneficial for some people in small spurts. But as many people have said already, is it sustainable? It does not seem to be so. And one of the phenomenons that many of us are noticing in practice, particularly among women, is that if a woman is already very stressed out and you restrict the eating window too much, the body interprets this as more stress and that can actually backfire weight loss efforts because it can impact thyroid hormones and sex hormones and that kind of imbalance is basically hitting the brakes for weight loss okay valid point there her last point was valid right i always stress that if you're going to be fasting fasting is not just simply not eating it's not that simple. Yes, that's the act. That's what it is. It's not eating. I get it. But there's a mental component. There's a spiritual component. You have to understand what your body is doing and why. And you have to support your body um, the best way that you can with the stimulus you're receiving. So if you are already stressed, like for whatever reason, sometimes it's not good to fast. If you're going to fast and you know you're stressed, you need to understand what you're doing, how you're doing it so that the fast can be beneficial. If you just feel like you're starving yourself, you're already stressed, you feel like you're starving yourself, then obviously this is going to make things a little bit more challenging for you. And maybe under that circumstance, I might recommend that somebody need to get their mind right a little bit, learn a bit about fasting, the benefits, maybe how the, the fasting can help them to de-stress and make their position a little bit stronger or better with whatever she's got going on. But that's 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 a fair point. Now, the the original statement she kind of made was like, oh, you know, it, is fasting, is it right for everybody or is it going to be beneficial for everybody or just because you fast longer, is it going to be better? No. Now, I disagree with that. Obviously, fasting is going to be beneficial for everyone who partakes in fasting properly. And that's just something that, you know, we're learning along the way. Um, it's not it may not be right for everyone at the at any particular moment, right? We kind of talked about that, but holistically fasting is gonna be beneficial um, across the board. So Dr. Fung, what are your thoughts on what Robin's saying now about, about how this may be stressful? It may be a stressful circumstance for your body to be in. Well, that's certainly true. You are stressing the body, but you have to understand that exercise is a stress too. You don't see anybody saying, oh, nobody should exercise. Certainly, you're putting the body under stress, and that's how it gets stronger. Like you work out and you, you know, you put your body under stress, you lift heavy things. In this case, it's totally different. It's like a workout for your body. What you're trying to do is tap into your own energy stores. Is it stressful? Sure, it is. But then you're going to relieve it. And it, it it's, it's a balance here, and I think that's what we're trying to get at. So, if you are 400 pounds, you want to spend more time using up those calories. 
you don't want to spend more time putting in calories. If you're 80 pounds, then yeah, probably not a good idea yep. to spend a lot of time uh, using up those calories. So guys of course, Jason Fung, the voice of reason. Keep in mind, Jason Fung, if you guys don't know, is a fasting professional. He is a medical professional. He's a doctor. However, he studies fasting. So he's qualified to speak on fasting. And this is one of the common misconceptions when it comes to like listening to doctors. We think, oh, they have a white coat. They know everything. No, they don't. As a matter of fact, it's like almost the opposite. They, they sp you typically are going to specialize in one thing. So you can ask them about that one specific thing. They're going to give you their opinion about other things. But to be honest with you, it's better to go to a professional about whatever it is you're seeking. So if you want to learn about fasting, you go to a fasting professional. Obviously, I agree with Dr. Jason Fung. Fasting can be a very good stress. I don't take back my original statement. You know, you need to you need to be mentally prepared. There needs to be a preparation process. I preach that vehemently. Like you got to understand what you're doing and why. But once you understand that, then you can allow that stress to come on your body. And of course, as he mentioned, um, you know, it's it's a balance. Guys, I was a fitness trainer before my life in medical school back in the day. Uh, fitness trainer for about six years, and whoa, I, oh, those were the days. Those were the days. See, that's why I gave you a little dominant guns before. You sick. sure? You sure you weren't an underwear model? <laughs> we'll talk where did about, we'll, where did they dig that up? <laughs> hey, Dom, the, guess what? I got a picture for you. I know you do. I've seen some good ones of you, well, too. Well, take a look at that one. I've seen some really good ones. <laughs> See? Look at this I, I don't. Stud. I don't I know. know what diet I was on. I was 20-something years old. That's Whatever it was Everything was works then. Whatever so. it was was working. But listen, here's, here's the thing. Real quick is I was a personal trainer for all these years, and honestly, I don't like things that are not sustainable. If In reality, when I look at this, I say, am I going to eat one meal a day for the rest of my life? Honestly, and if I can't say that, then eh, I'm a little biased. So I think it's very, very important to point, point out here that if... Okay, before someone responds, look, my, my thing is this. Sustainability is extremely important, okay? Uh, to, say, <laughs> to say that, hey, it's one meal a day. Am I going to do this forever? Let's throw it out. No, of course not. When you have cancer and you're taking cancer treatment, okay? Now, this is traditional method, traditional thinking. Do you say... Ah, I'm not going to do it. It's not like I'm going to do the cancer treatment for the rest of my life. So why would I start now? No, nobody says that. See, here's the thing. In modern society, fasting is a healing modality. It's a therapy. It's medicine. OK, so just like any other medicine, you you it's not you're not supposed to be. Well, most medicines you are going to take the rest of your life, but. You're not really supposed to be taking medication your entire life. You're supposed to have an issue, get your medication or your therapy, and then not use it anymore, right? And that's not to say that you should necessarily throw fasting away because in, historically speaking, it was a, a lifestyle thing. So I do think adopting it as a lifestyle thing makes sense. However, if you're just using it for the purposes of reversing diabetes, losing weight, increasing your ability to get fertile and, and have children or whatever the case may be, then yeah, why wouldn't you use it? It doesn't have to be something you do for the rest of your life. And I will say this, when you go into it, you might think I'm not going to do this for the rest of my life. Then you start seeing the benefits of it. Like he's clearly someone who does not fast. That's the only reason why he's so adamant about I'm not doing this the rest of my life. Yeah. That's from the outside looking in. Once you start doing it, you're like, I'm definitely doing this for the rest of my life. Like I could tell you guys, fasting will always be a part of my life, period. So, If a nutritionist or a physician um, is recommending this or a fitness trainer is recommending this for a patient or client, please take into consideration potential risk for an eating disorder. Because we know that fad diets, um, fasting diets can be a trigger to sort of exacerbate an underlying eating disorder. So I just encourage everyone that might suggest this to really pay attention to that. Exactly right. Well, the yeah, I'm not going to let, let him get away with that. Fast, now, I've worked with thousands, tens of thousands of people, you know, depending on how you look at it, we've got, you know, hundreds of thousands of people in our community. And I have, and I have talked to people with eating disorders, okay? I've also talked to people prone to eating disorders, and I've talked to just normal people. Now, for people who do not have any type of 
like there, there's you're not prone to eating disorders you you don't have an addictive personality i have never seen fasting manufacture that meaning if it was not already there fasting has never manufactured it so that's point number one point number two keep in mind these eating disorders are mental disorders and what does fasting do it helps to regulate your hormonal balance the chemistry of your body it helps to get your mental back you you get mental clarity back so what i have seen is people with these types of disorders actually be built better relationships with food versus them spiraling out of control into some poor eating now i have also seen people who they 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 they're very thin i don't i can't say for 100 percent fat because they never told me that they were bulimic or, or anemic or anything or not anemic but that they were bulimic or whatever the case may be and i have seen them want to go really hard on fasting and typically i will I'll question them, right? We'll have a conversation. Hey, why do you want to fast? What are you what are you fasting for? Because that can be a slippery slope. So, so my caution and where I would agree with him is if you if someone is already diagnosed with that type of disorder, yeah, you want to be very careful with fasting. Even though fasting can potentially be beneficial to them, once again, the mental prep and the, the understanding of what fasting is and why you're doing it, that may not resonate with them in the condition that they're in. And therefore, we want to be a little careful. But that is that is an extremely small, when I look at as many people as I've, I've actually interacted with, worked with, dealt with, that is, su I'm in my head, I'm thinking of maybe two, maybe three people in the six years I've been teaching this. So, um, is it worth mentioning? Sure. But it's just one of them things where it's like, this is the extreme exception to the rule. And when you bring it up on a platform in this manner, especially the way that he did, it makes it sound much bigger and much different than what it is in reality. Diet debate continues. And I think the biggest takeaway here is make sure you talk to your doctor before you engage in any new diet of any kind, whether it be a fad diet, intermittent fasting, OMAD diet, Talk to your doctor first. Dr. Fung, Robin, Dr. Khan, thank you Look, so much for joining us. I um I have a I have an issue with lumping fasting and with fat diets. I mean, just when, when you look at the history of fasting, when you when you look at how human beings interact with fasting currently, it's it's not a fat diet. It never has been. I think that's a little shady. That's kind of just the doctors. That's what they do. They're whoever writes their scripts and stuff. That's just what they do when it comes to, you know, really beneficial um, healing modalities that can actually benefit and help people. Um, they're going to they're going to throw that shade in there. So uh, it is not a fat diet. However, people can always abuse anything, right? So you could take something that is solid, that is historically sound, and you can manipulate it and turn it into like a fad thing, which we do see a lot, especially with the whole TikTok thing. So anyway, I thought this was a cool review. I'm glad that they definitely gave uh, Dr. J Dr. Jason Fung an opportunity to speak. I'm sure in the, in the full segment, uh, maybe he got to speak more. I don't know. But what do you guys think of that, man? Uh, what do you think about OMAD? Have you used it? Um, or what is your favorite fasting method? Anyway, I hope you guys got something great for this. If you did, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe. As always, the application of knowledge is power, and I will see you all next time.